Hello, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in whatever Hello. part of the world. We are here today transmitting live from Milan, Kazakhese, and we have a dear, dear close friend in the house, Posca Radigonda. And today we are going to be highlighting Italian feelings and atmosphere through the beautiful photography of Tosca Radigondo. So let me just go ahead and introduce our, our, our guest uh, today, Tosca Radigondo, who is located in Austin, Texas. And Tosca, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> we're, we're excited to have you uh, here with us. I mean, um, you know, we go back a long, long ways, and uh, it's... Uh, we miss you. <laughs> and uh, let me let, tell us a little bit about uh, the, you know, a nice little intro about uh, how we met and stuff of that nature. Okay. Um, well, a long time ago, when I was 22 years old, um, I wanted to move to Milan because I wanted to uh, pursue my dream to become a fashion photographer. And I guess about six months out of art school, um, I decided to go there and. Uh, wanted to build up my portfolio to go see fashion magazines. A um, couple months into my time there, I was introduced to um, a makeup artist named Giuseppe, and I would go to his apartment and we would prepare the models for um, our fashion sessions. And he had a roommate, and her name was Betty. <laughs> and uh, she was also a makeup artist. And uh, I immediately liked her. We got along very well right away. And so we started working together. Um, about a year after I was living in Milan in my attic apartment above a pizzeria, um, I met my husband, Angelo. Um, I used to walk past the pizzeria all the time with these gorgeous creatures, these beautiful models, and all the um, waiters, the pizzaiolo, the owner, everybody would run to the window or run outside to, Ciao Bella! Everybody <laughs> wanted to see the models and say hello. And uh, but Angelo was always trying to talk to me, and it, my Italian was still very new, and um, he didn't speak a word of English. So um, about uh, six years after I was in, in Milan, which I didn't say at the beginning that I went there with hoping to stay six months, and I stayed six years. <laughs> um, about six years later, I um, went to live in Miami because there was a lot of great production there for uh, fashion work and uh, was going to get married to Angelo, and Betty came with us, and um, uh, we got married a few months, Angelo and I got married a few months later, and, and Betty stood up on our altar and translated our wedding for Angelo's parents, because they, they didn't speak any English. And Nazim, the whole time, was trying to call my mom's house <laughs> to get news about Betty, because they had just met right before we got married, and then they married about six months later. Um, after that, we moved to Chicago, and then I got a job shooting in Austin, and came down here to shoot, fell in love with Austin, moved here, and I've been here since. So, that's fantastic that. Fantastic intro, fantastic intro, Tosca. That's a great, great intro. Let's start looking at a little bit at your portfolio. You prepared a little document for us that I'm going to be sharing with the crowd. And let me just get this ready to go here. And there you go. Okay, so. Oh my god, this is a picture that is, I don't know, how many years? <laughs> a lot of years. <laughs> you probably That's, just met here, Tosca. That's beautiful, Betty. <laughs> this is one of our shoots, probably at Industria Super Studio, and Betty's making up the models. I used to like to shoot a lot of behind the scenes. This is way before Instagram or anything where, you know, you would just take pictures of, of daily life. Um, and I used to like to photograph uh, my crew preparing the photo shoots. Uh, these are some of the images um, that Betty and I did together with fashion. Very nice, very nice. Goes back for a while, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I was so always intrigued with, with Italian food. Even back then, she's lying on Italian food, actually. It's lentils. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You remember the shoot? In particular? Of course, <laughs> I remember everything. I remember, I remember being on my knees to fix the girl on those B P P's. It was it was uh, quite um 
encouraging. But, yeah. <laughs> Let me go back to that detail there. There you go. Quite interesting. The girl was lying on, uh, on, on a huge amount of, of peas, and the one before there was lenses. Lentils. Orange lentils, yep. Orange, excellent, excellent. So this goes back to, to, the, to the fashion period when you were in Milan. With, well, you and Betty were working together at the time. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I love to see these pictures because they're really timeless. Yes. They, can, they, are, they could be shot the other, you know, the, yesterday. And, yeah. then, and then, so this was when you guys were working in Milan at the time together. And uh, how was how was that as an experience? Did you guys spend a lot of time together as friends, or? Well, we yeah. see each other almost every day because um, there was a lot of work. And um, usually, in 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 fashion, when you start working with the crew, you use the same people over and over again because you didn't have to talk that much. Uh, people understand each other. It's easy to start and easy to, to get to the end of the day, right? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> way, <laughs> exactly the best way. Yes. <laughs> so I guess it's the same now with your crew, with the yes. people you are working often with. Or We're married, you? practically. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Fantastic. Let me do a little, okay. Uh, I'm going to do a little shout out. There's a couple of people in the crowd that I'd like to mention here. Uh, we've got uh, David Pipe is joining us today. And I just would like to highlight hello from Sussex. A bit late, unfortunately. That's, that's okay. That's no problem. And then we've got uh, Coach uh, G. Moore over in Texas. <laughs> All the way over from Texas. Uh, that's, that's fantastic. And a big hello. And Laura Fabiani. Because the kids are looking forward to the show. She's uh, over in Canada, and we sent her, Tosca, a copy of Eating Heart Book. Oh, man. Yeah, because uh, she. I like it. <laughs> I sent her a copy of the book, and she's going to give us some feedback on that. And uh, so let's go back again now to um, continue I, looking I, at, at. Yeah, Betty has a question. Why for you. is he showing some things? I wanted to. Uh, asked Tosca some questions about her, her work. And um, starting exactly with this um, subject, the, her trip to Italy when she was very young, and I wanted to ask Tosca if, um, if she thinks that, um, uh, her, uh, that there is a connection between her decision to come to Italy in the early 80s uh, and her Italian and ancestry, so the, the fact that she, her family moved to the, the States years and years before and she was feeling kind of tied to this country that she never saw before. Okay, tell us. Yeah, absolutely. I knew back um, when I was in art school, I knew that to become a fashion photographer, it was the best way to go would be go to Paris or, or to Milan, and um, but Italy always just felt much more approachable, and and it felt like the right place to go with with the ancestry in in uh, my background. Um, my grandfather was Italian, and of course spoke Italian. But like most people um, in our generation, it's skipped a generation where they didn't speak the language to uh, the next generation. So I was always infatuated with with uh, going to Italy, and also with the origin of my name. Um, it was very funny when I when I first got to Italy, and still now, um, probably because I don't know if anyone knows, but my name is in um, in opera, and um, it's not really a common name in Italy. It's not. It's, um, <laughs> it's kind of funny actually that that's my name. So when I would when I was there, and I would say that that was my name was Tosca, and they would say, "Ma ti chiami Tosca, davvero?" <laughs> And they would they would always be very skeptical about it, but um, definitely uh, my grandfather passed away a few years before I went to Italy. But it would have been really nice to speak Italian with him and come back. Um, so yes, it was definitely a connection. Excellent. Let me let me go back and highlight some. Let's go to the next section on on, on this wonderful document that you sent us. And uh, let me just go ahead. Seeing these, and okay, so 
here we have a, <laughs> an interesting... Wow! <laughs> Yeah, bella. Yeah, bella. My wife is gorgeous in this picture. <laughs> and the sister wasn't bad either. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> this has been a problem all my life. My beautiful sister. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know that. Mine too. <laughs> Excellent. And that's so, another beautiful picture. So, uh, Tosca, I wanted to ask you. If, do you feel that the experience in this country has had an influence on your work aesthetics? Um, most definitely. I would say that um, when I first, let's see, when I first got to Italy, um, I had never seen so much beauty around me. Um, that had happened so quickly. Like you're there and you're you're by yourself and you're learning your way around. And um, you know, there was a daily beauty of simple things like colors of the vegetables at the markets and the way the light reflected off of the buildings and everything that I felt, um, the simplicity of the beauty of um the shops in, in, in Milan that you know was completely out of my budget and I couldn't even touch, but I could see it. Um, there's a simplicity in that that I definitely kept in my aesthetic throughout all these years in my photography. So, yes. Excellent, excellent question. Excellent question. Okay. Now here we go back, and I'm going to go forward a little bit and look at these really wonderful photos that you prepared a really fantastic document for us, Telska. I mean, when I got these today, I was like, wow. <laughs> And here we have. You know, I know a, a, a big part of your work, but each time I'm I'm surprised seeing these pictures because um, it's in, it's interesting to see the the point of view of somebody that comes from another country, but at the same time manages to get into uh, exactly the feeling of this country, the feeling that I recognize as as an Italian. You know, right? This uh, is exactly a question that I want to ask you. Because a lot of Italian photographers took pictures of the daily life and uh, of this country, and um, some of them really uh, wanted to show the provincial life, you know, the lifestyle of the the, the of the smallest areas, and I think they they managed to express it. But um, as a foreigner, you have another way of watching at, uh, at this um, uh, particular beauty of the, 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 the Italian um, how can I how can I explain it the Italian feeling so in other <laughs> words do you, do you think that you see our our town our landscapes and our habits from a different point of view compared to an Italian photographer? Well, I think that, um, well, I always try to see um, the most beautiful and simple side of life no matter where I'm at, but um, I think in Italy being, you know, young and going there and um, sort of starting my life out, I feel, sometimes I feel like my life started when I got to Italy. Um, it just felt very comfortable and very natural to me, um, but I think wandering around Milan um, being forced in, in a way to learn the language if I wanted to eat or make appointments with magazines or um, just any way I needed to find my way around. Um, you know, when you go into a, a, a bar and you have to point to a sandwich or whatever, you see the beauty in everything. You, you see everything with more of a detailed eye. Like you're looking for everything all the time as you're trying to get your way find your way around. Um, so it's kind of like a whole new world in front of you every day. So I think combining my my quest for sort of beauty and making things pretty and seeing all this abundance of um, vegetables and fruit and light and, and clothes and everything that was just so pretty in Italy, I was probably showing um, 
uh, that side of Italy it was more of a um, of a pretty like what I felt was pretty in Italy. Um, you kind of have to go back to the day when I was there when there was no um, Instagram, there was no Facebook, there was no Google, no Google Translator. Um, there was no globalization like there is now. There was no Italy. Um, you know, you, nowadays everybody has a has a panino, you know, a panini or whatever they call it, <laughs> Taco Bell or whatever will have these things. You know, I didn't know what that was back then. And um, Italy was sort of um, the Leaning Tower of Pisa or a picture of the Colosseum on a postcard or things like that that most most Americans probably only knew about Italy back in those days. So when I first got there and I I saw all this this beauty around me and in, in, in a detailed way, um, I think that's what I wanted to show. So I hope that answers that question. <laughs> Excellent. Let me do. Let me take an advantage here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, and we got some more uh, people that have joined us. I have Mia Voss is here saying hi, darlings. Nazim Belch and Elizabeth Tosca. I love following you on Instagram. Always inspired by your photos. Thank you. <laughs> hi, Mia. <laughs> and we also have uh, Laura Fabiani. I love that pic of Elizabeth and her sister. Such stunning eyes. Thank Absolutely. you so much, Laura, for that. And uh, so, uh, okay, here we go. And let's go back to the show here. Let me just get back our document up again. And there we go. I'm going to share that again. And in the meantime... Oh, Nazim? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I also was going to say, too, I, I forgot to say in, in the last question that um, if I was talking with my husband about this a long time ago and, and he was also telling me too that um, I mean this is just his point of view but when when he was little you know how the, on the you'd go on field trips often and you'd go around and you'd see the monuments and things and they were sort of part of your your life every day and it when you were coming in as a as someone from another world or another as Betty says another world another country you you see it as a very exciting different time but right? When I say another world, I mean another world because <laughs> I went to the States the first time in 1983 and it was another world. <laughs> it is another world everywhere. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, Sorry. Nice, Slim. <laughs> Let me go ahead and I'm going to go ahead with some more pictures. I think that you really had a point because um, um, when there was no glo globalization, you can see pictures, you can see movies, of course, but uh, the, the experience of going to another country was really much stronger than it is now. Yes. And um, you were going to a place where the, the stores were different, the clothes were different, the attitude was different, the light was different. <laughs> so <laughs> McDonald's was in the States, was not here at that time. <laughs> And the, the cappuccino was here, and it was not in the States at that time. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right? So, no, no. I mean, these are just two stupid details, but um, the yes. whole feeling of the country was was, deep, it was different. So, yes. coming to Italy as a young girl probably was um, quite a shock. In fact, you know, I wanted to ask you, what was the most shocking cultural gap that you had to face as a young girl and a young professionist when you first moved to Italy? Oh gosh, uh, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> should, I, should I be honest or should I? <laughs> honest, we like. <laughs> well, let's see. I would say that um, any bad comment is acceptable. <laughs> every comment is accept. okay. I would say that Probably the first thing is that everything was closed um, at lunch. Everything was closed early in the evening. Everything was closed on Sundays. Um, but also the fact that people actually took Sundays seriously and that you had, it was almost somewhat mandatory to take off Sunday. You couldn't work on Sunday and you had to be with your family on Sunday, even if you wanted to be with them or not. They were, um, oh, 
No, that was that was me. That was. What was that? <laughs> I'm not used to Google yet. Um, you had to be with your family, no matter what, and you had to spend that time with them. And it was sort of, still to me, it was a something very different and surprising to me at that time. And it's still today one of my favorite things about Italy. I mean, things have changed a lot now. Yes, you can find stores open on Sundays. And yes, people definitely work a lot more um, hours on Sundays sometimes now that you know than they used to. But I think that back then it was just very um, quiet. Um, let's see. It took five months for me to get a phone when I got my first. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's important in the age of no internet. Remember, it's changed. No, nothing. <laughs> if you can imagine, though, I sort of. You know, I, my husband used to come out, you know, to the window with all the, you know, the ciao bellas uh, when I would walk past the pizzeria. But also, there was a payphone in the pizzeria. And I would go down there and I would get Gitone, which was the little token. It was like a 20 cent token that you get because that phone only had Gitone. And uh, the owner would sit there and, uh, you know, I understood, you know, like four words. And he would always say, fotomodella, fotomodella. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Basically asking me where the the models were, I'm sure. Um, but uh, I used to use the payphone there, and I would make my appointments to photograph the models by using the payphone. And uh, I remember when I got the phone in my apartment; it was the best day of my life at that time. I can't even tell you five months. And I think in Italy it was kind of that you know, hey, signora, hey, you know, that you ask them when when you're going to get something, and they they kind of give you that. Uh, Hey, Signora, you know, <laughs> kind of like, you know, Arriva, you know, okay, it's gonna arrive. Um, I would say that that was pretty pretty intense. And then, of course, you know, being a young photographer and trying to make appointments, um, there just weren't a lot of people who spoke English. So, uh, like I said, I learned the language and everything. But I think making those appointments on the phone in the pizzeria, trying to speak Italian, was probably <laughs> quite. <laughs> Quite the time. When I look back now, sometimes I, I, I can't believe it. Um, I guess that and I think how nicely dressed everybody was. Um, I had a pair of jeans with holes in the knees that I didn't wear anymore after a while because um, I was getting a few looks like maybe, what was that I was wearing? <laughs> it was, you know, things are different nowadays, you know, but um, there, there's something about the way Italians present themselves. Um, it's it's beautiful, you know. They would have maybe one or two pieces of clothing that were just so beautiful, and 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 even if that's just a simple sweater or something, I don't know. It's just the the clothing and the the presentation of the way people looked. Um, you would see a woman on a on a Vespa with high heels, or a woman riding a bike with high heels. Um, I never saw that in California. They didn't have people like that. And um, when I think it was the first August that I was there. Um, the entire city of Milan completely emptied out. Not a single person. There used to be bikes that you could rent in Milan. I mean, nowadays I think most cities have the the bike rent bike share. Yeah. Um, but I think Milan might have been one of the first cities to do that. And a um, long time ago, it was about a thousand lira a day. You know, about a dollar a day, and you could have the bike. And I rented one one August day, and I rode my bike down Corso Buenos Aires, which is one of the principal streets in Milan, and not a single car drove by the entire time. Uh, I remember feeling that at that time, it was just like you're the, you know, the last person on earth kind of feeling because everybody would leave Milan in August at that time and, you know, go on vacation. Right. So I think that and, and a lot of um, uh, men uh, stopping <laughs> the street, stopping women to say hello. <laughs> Um, and just not in a creepy way, but in sort of a matter-of-fact kind of way. I don't know. It was, it was kind of a culture shock. So I guess that, yeah. <laughs> Sorry if I'm talking too much. <laughs> Let's, okay, I'm going to show a little bit more. We're going to go back to the portfolio, which is uh, really wonderful. In the meantime, um, these are really, really great pictures. I love this one. This is one of my favorites. I was not riding a bike, but this is my this are my feet. <laughs> but she was cooking. <laughs> but I was cooking, right? <laughs> and then okay, and then here we have a beautiful seaside shot. 
that uh, I know I know this place quite well to say the truth. <laughs> <laughs> in Liguria, where we I spend a lot of time. And I think I remember I we love that image. Yeah, I love yeah. The, that's great. the one before it's it, it, it just it's such a, a Italian seaside image where yeah. there's a little bit of everything going on there. <laughs> This one, I, this is another one of my favorites. The way that the the, the, the composition in this in this shot is amazing. I love it. It's really really great. And but what is interesting for me is that when I see these pictures, it's like I recognize that the atmosphere. You know, it's like somebody's showing it to me. I know it, but somebody's showing it to me. Yeah. Really good. Exactly. And, and then here we have a wedding picture of, of, a, of a dear friend of ours. Right. Yeah. She got married in, in she got married in the castle right down the street from where she grew up. It was it was a beautiful castle, just very countryside, very beautiful, beautiful place. And she had always gone there when she was little, so she got married there. And I flew from Austin uh, for the weekend to photograph the wedding, and then. <laughs> I love so, it. There was one of the quickest things. I, I couldn't stay, unfortunately, but I still got there and moved, uh, got my rent of the car in Milan and drove to the wedding and came right back. So, so this one is one of my favorites because not everybody could fit in the church. <laughs> <laughs> everybody had to, it was a very, very small church, so they kind of standing room only, and there are a few people outside the church. Well, this they're waiting to, to throw the rice. Oh uh, yeah, the typical rice love, ceremony. Everybody's so elegant. <laughs> and I love this picture with the kids. Yeah, this is actually at the wedding. You can see the turret of the castle in the background. See, this is the top of the castle. Yeah. Okay. And okay, here we go. Now we got some common themes here. I'm moving along because uh, we are halfway through the show, and I want to remind our folks who are joining us that we are highlighting Tosca Radigonda. Uh, in, on Casa Chiesi. She is a photographer located in Austin, Texas, and we're going through Italian feelings with her through her beautiful Italian portfolio. Tosca, talking about your work, I wanted to ask you if um, you can describe the difference between working with Italian clients and Italian crews and with American clients and crews. Hmm. Um, it's not not too different. Um, I would say that um, working when I was working a lot in Milan with fashion, um, the days would be a little different structured than than most of my photo shoots now because I'm photographing mostly babies and children. Where you really can't stop during the day. You have to go all day because you have to be ready when they're ready. And um, shooting fashion in Milan, you you could sit down for lunch and stuff. But I feel like um, Italians have a very, very strong work ethic, and I feel like when you're on set, everybody always worked very hard. The days may have been a little longer in Italy. Um, you had a lot of collaboration. Um, things were, were a lot very open. Um, and in America, it's a, the billing and the payments are a little easier. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it's not hard for me to believe that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess that you, you, you're, that you're that honest here. Right <laughs> okay, okay, folks. <laughs> I'm going to highlight, I'm going to continue highlighting this series here, which is, I think, from Eating Heart, if I'm not mistaken, from the yeah. book that you guys worked on together. And me and Tosca, some years ago, decided to... Um, to develop the, this project, it is a cooking book, and she came to Italy twice, once in winter time and once in the summertime, uh, to shoot uh, 20 different menus. So we wanted really to shoot them with the, with, you know, with the real thing. So with, when the season was the right season, and um, some of, some of these pictures uh, are shot during the the shooting for the book. And um, for me, it's, it's, it's very nice to see <laughs> this picture because I have a lot of memories tied to these um, pictures. 
Okay. Oh, there he is. Oh, uh, yeah, that's me with my mom. Uh, we were, mom. We were always getting maybe the leftovers from eating heart when you guys were preparing the book. No, this Your mom is the best dinner guest. Yeah, yeah. She oh, is. my goodness. She's so lovely. And so the, much going on at the Italian table all the time. Look at oh, this. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> this is the cover from the book, if I'm not mistaken. I think yeah. I just want to remind people watching or whoever, that later on we're probably going to be doing another show dedicated just to eating heart, and hopefully Tosca will join us so that we can look at the book in detail. Uh, the book is available. We are also, we've taken it to digital formats. It's also available on the Apple Store, but well, that's the theme for another show altogether. Today we wanted to really talk about Italian feeling and look at Tosca's wonderful portfolio. You see the the one the going back that was the 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 pasta fatto con i ceci, no? The uh, farinata. Farinata. Yeah, the farinata. Yeah, it's it's like like I was saying at the beginning of the show. You know, e everything is just there. It's so beautiful and it's 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 so available and. and Yes, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to ask you, because yeah. you know there is a, a difference between shooting uh, human beings and uh, or you know, adults or babies, and to shoot objects. But uh, the reason why I really like the pictures that you shot for the book is that, in a way, they're shot with the same um, the, the same attitude that you use when you. Uh, shoot, pic shoot pictures for for human beings, and um, I wanted to ask you how did you manage to have exactly to maintain the same immediacy, even the subject are you know uh, in the book are mainly food or ingredients. Um, well, you know when I when I photograph people, um, I'm always just looking for the most authentic moment and um, never pose anybody um, always just making trying to make everybody feel comfortable and to capture their their moments um, and everything sort of just happens in my photography I never set it up so I think when we were doing the book um, the food imagery I was just basically shooting what was there that was already beautiful to me that I didn't I didn't set up, so no, no posing the food. <laughs> if you say, <laughs> um, you know, just keeping it simple. And uh, like I said before, everything is just so beautiful to me, and my eyes get really big when I'm in Italy all the time. Um, if I had the day that they can invent that camera that's in in my forehead, <laughs> 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 everything just looks so beautiful to me. And um, the way the light falls on it. Um, you know, the way the oranges are just sitting on the, the table. Um, things are just there, available to shoot. So I feel that, that that's what we were doing with the book, that it was just kind of a very loose approach, and I was just shooting what was already pretty and already there. Um, Looking about the, the, the camera in the forehead, I always wondered, when, um, when was the first time that you had the feeling that um, you wanted to see the world through a filter. That was your camera. <laughs> <laughs> filter. <laughs> yeah, because that's what um, we ever do. You know, we look at the world. You guys look at the world through a camera, and uh, the result is is interesting. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, it, it's hard for me to answer that question. Um, I I think that lots of times, um, you know, you you're born with these feelings inside already and they're so overwhelming sometimes and so passionate when you're you're out in an everyday life like I drive people crazy half the time because I'm constantly stopping the car or stopping and photographing something um, that I see that I like I think when I was maybe a preteen um, and you know you go through times where you you start to um, like I started to take pictures when I was 14 um, and I was quite shy and, and sort of wanted things to be nice and wanted things to be pretty and I think that may have been when that all, I started to see things like that. I remember um, you know, sitting outside and when the leaves would blow and, and watching the leaves blow and watching the sunlight come through it, I can actually remember those days. Um, so 
I think around that time, from the beginning of my teenage years, it's probably when I really started to see it. And then, of course, when I got to Italy, um, it was very uneasy. It was very easy to unleash <laughs> and, and shoot the things through the, the, the filter. <laughs> Is, it, is there a time for one more question? Did I, yeah, did we're, we're, I was just going to mention that we're running. We're running at you know we got about ten more minutes to go. Uh, I'm a, already at the end of the portfolio, highlighting uh, a, a moment that's quite close to my heart and to Betty's heart because <laughs> I remember you were. We had the pleasure of having you at our wedding in Miami Beach because we were always li we were living in the same city at the time, and this. This is one of the most emotional. I mean, this. Go back. Go back. Okay. One minute. I'm very happy that Tosca got the expression of Nazim in this picture because <laughs> no, it doesn't happen very often. So <laughs> I'm very happy. That's not <laughs> <That's true. fine. laughs> And I mean, this is the profile that the picture that I use on Google, and everybody. Seems to quite like it a lot, and and this is the closure of the, of the portfolio. Let's. Yeah, uh, I like to end with that one. Is it? I wouldn't call this the portfolio. This is just a small, tiny, micro part of Tosca's work. <laughs> this is not a portfolio. Yes. Okay, and then we have some more folks that have joined us in here. Uh, I'm going to do a quick shout out before we close out. There is uh, Elena Belomonti from London. Buenísima la farinata. Thanks a lot. On that. And then also we have um, uh, Michelle Reb uh, Rebel, who's also joining us. And when some people are trying to watch on the iPhones. The iPhones don't work quite well with Hangouts as a, as a, as a mobile, so I just wanted to mention that to everybody. And uh, let's see what else do we have here. Go back to Tosca. So Tosca, talk to us about. Let's wrap it up with. Talk to us about what you're currently working on at the moment. Um, I'm just currently working on some projects in Austin about youth in Austin, and um, hoping, <laughs> trying to get to Milan in December, um, so I can have some. Oh hi, there you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the pictures the whole time. Um, so I could have a little polenta and some barbaresco and some fun with my friends at Casa Chiesi. <laughs> um, I love Italy in the winter time. I there's it's a whole different part of Italy. It's a um, it's a very seasonal country. I mean, like many places, but I think the food maybe drives that a lot in Italy, where you have um, you know such specific times of the year that you eat certain things and there's just this beautiful feel warmth of, um, of warm Italian food especially when when uh, Betty makes it and um, you have this beautiful light coming through the trees when there's no branches or there's no uh, leaves on the on the branches and the low winter sun comes through the trees and it's a different time of year. I mean, a lot of people go to Italy in the summer and in the fall, but even in the winter, it's a beautiful time to go, and you know, the flights are less expensive. And um, I don't know. I, I, it's a whole other, whole other world. So, so are, you, are you coming? Are you coming? Does this mean that we're going to see you very soon? I think so. <laughs> Before the end of the year, maybe. I think so. Then so do you see. <laughs> okay, so basically, uh, let's uh, you know we're gonna wrap it up. I uh, would love to thank um, everybody who's been engaging and watching, and it was super great to have you joining us to meet uh, Tosca Rigonda, who is uh, she is one of the persons that has really been behind the inspiration towards doing this project, Kazakiezi. What do you think? No, for sure. For sure. And uh, we miss her a lot. She's over in Austin, Texas. Uh, we talk quite a lot, and hopefully she'll be back soon. And Tosca, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. And Aza Kezi, that's Grazie. it. Bye for everybody. Ciao. Bye. Take care. Thanks Ciao. For Ciao. <laughs>